are not absolute. Explanation of Catholic morals, page 130. Just recently, from the Vatican in Rome, this news release was given from the official Vatican newspaper, and I'm quoting that of date May 19, 1960. Tuesday, stated that the Roman Catholic hierarchy had the right and duty to intervene in the political field to guide its flock. The newspaper rejected what is termed, quoting, the absurd split of conscience between the believer and the citizen. However, Alberto Romano made it clear that its stern co-announcement was valid for Roman Catholic laymen everywhere. It deplored the great confusion of ideas that is spreading especially between Catholic doctrine and social and political activity and between the ecclesiastical hierarchy and the lay faithful in the civil field. Pope John XXIII recently gave this statement according to the St. Louis Review, dated December 12, 1968. Quote, Catholics may unite their strength toward the common aim, and the Catholic hierarchy has the right and duty of guiding them. Question, sir. Do you subscribe to the doctrine of mental reservation, which I have quoted from the Catholic authority? Do you submit to the authority of the present Pope, which I have quoted from in these quotations? Well, let me say in the first place, I've not read the uh, Catholic encyclopedia, and I don't know all the quotation which you're giving me. I don't agree with the statement. I find no difficulty in saying so, but I do think probably I could get a, make a better comment if I had the entire uh, quotation uh, before me. But in any case, I have not read it before, and uh, if the quotation is meant to imply that when you take an oath, uh, you don't uh, mean it, or that, that uh, it's proper for you to take oaths and then break them, it's proper for you to lie, if that is what this states, and I don't know whether that's what it states, unless I had read it all in context, then, of course, I would not agree with it. Secondly, on the question of the Observatory Romano article, once again, I don't have that in full. I read the statement of last September, which was directed to a situation in Sicily where uh, some of the Catholics were active in the Communist Party, but I'm not familiar with the one of May 1960 that you mentioned. In any case, the Observatory Romano has no standing as far as binding me. Thirdly, quotation of Pope John of 1958. I didn't catch all of that, and if you read that again, I'll tell you whether that, I feel, uh, uh, whether I support that or not. Pope John the 23rd only recently stated, according to the St. Louis Review, date of December 12, 1958, quote, Catholics must unite their strength toward the common aim, and the Catholic hierarchy has the right and duty of guiding them. Yes, Do you well, subscribe to that? Well, now, I, but I don't, I couldn't describe guiding them in what area. And the You're talking about in the area of faith and morals and the uh, instructions of the uh, church. Uh, I would think any Baptist minister or congregational minister has the right and duty to try to guide his flock. But you mean that by that statement that the Pope or anyone else could bind me in the fulfillment, in, by a statement, in the fulfillment of my public duty, I say no. If that statement is intended to mean, and it's very difficult to comment on a sentence taken out of an article, which I have not read, but if that is intended to imply that the hierarchy has some obligation, or has an obligation to attempt to guide the members of the Catholic Church, uh, then uh, that may be proper. But it all depends on the previous language of what you mean by God. If you mean direct or instruct on matters dealing with the organization of the faith, the details of the faith, then of course they have that uh, obligation. If you mean that by that, under that, he could guide me or anyone could guide or direct me in fulfilling my public duty, then I do not agree. Thank you, sir. And then you do not agree with the Pope on that statement. Gentlemen, now, you know, see, that's why I was want to be careful because that statement, it seems to me, is taken out of context that you just made to me. I could not tell you what the Pope meant unless I had the entire article. I would be glad to state to you that no one can direct me in the fulfillment of my duties as a public official under the United States Constitution. That I am directed to do to the people of the United States and sworn to in oath to God. Now that is my flat statement. I did not want to go into detail on a sentence that you read to me, which 
I may not understand completely. Uh, in my case, that's why I don't understand. Anyway. Gentlemen, we have time. We have time for one more question, if it can be handled briefly. Senator Kennedy, I'm Robert McLaren from the Westminster Presbyterian Church here in Houston. You have been quite clear, and I think laudably so, on this matter of the separation of church and state, and you have answered very graciously the many questions that have come up around it. There is one question, however, which seems to me quite relevant, and this relates to your statement that if you found by some remote possibility a real conflict between your oath of office as president, that you would resign that office if it were in real conflict with your church. No, I said with my conscience. With your conscience. In the code book of errors of Pope Leo IX, which the Catholic Encyclopedia states is still binding, although it's from a different century, is still binding upon all Catholics, there are three very specific things which are denounced, including the separation of state and church, the freedom of religion other than Catholics who propagate themselves, and the freedom of conscience. Do you still feel, these being binding upon you, that you hold your oath of office above your allegiance to the Pope on these issues? Well, let's go through the issues, because I don't think there's a conflict on these three issues. The first issue, as I understood it, was on the relationship between the Catholic and the state and other faiths. Is that the... No, the separation of church and state. Yes. He explicitly considers an error. I support that. I support that. And in my judgment, the American Bishop Statement of 1948 clearly supported it. That, in my judgment, is the view held by Catholics in this country. They support the Constitution of separation of church and state, and they are not in error in that regard. I just want to change it. Second, which is the right of religions other than Roman Catholics to propagate themselves. I think that they should be permitted to propagate themselves, any faith, without any limitations by the power of the state or encouragement by the power of the state. What's the third one? The third was the freedom of conscience in matters of religion, and this also, in point 46, I believe it is, extends to freedom of the mind in the realms of science. This is part... Yes, well, I believe in freedom of conscience. I guess our time is coming to an end, but I believe in it. Let me say, finally, that I am delighted to come here today. I don't want anyone to think, because they interrogate me on this very important question, that I regard that as unfair questions or unreasonable, or that somebody who is concerned about the matter is prejudiced or bigoted. I think this fight for religious freedom is basic in the establishment of the American system, and therefore any candidate for the office, I think, should submit himself to the questions of any reasonable man. My only objection would be... My only limit to that would be that if somebody said, regardless of Senator Kennedy's position, regardless of how much evidence he's given that here's what he says he means, I still wouldn't vote for him because he's a member of that church. I would consider that unreasonable. What I consider to be reasonable in an exercise of free will and free choice is to ask the candidate to state his view as broadly as possible, investigate his record to see what he states he believes, and then make an independent and rational judgment as to whether he could be entrusted with this highly important position. So I want you to know that I'm grateful to you for inviting me tonight. I'm sure that I have made no converts to my church, but I do hope, I do hope that at least my view, which I believe to be the view of my fellow Catholics who hold office, I hope that it may be of some value and at least assist in you to make a careful judgment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.